Today we're doing another repair video, and yes, it's going to be on the F3. Uh, essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to go over how to remove the armrests on this chair. Like for example, if you have to take it off to put it in the back of a vehicle, or maybe if you're flying or something. Also I'm going to show how to adjust the height and also the width of the armrests. And then as one final thing, I'm going to show you how to repair these armrests when they start coming apart and going all Pee Wee Herman talking Ottoman on you. There's a chair that freaking talks. Hey, look! You may be shocked to find out how to fix that. And it's very similar to how I would do things, but it's how Permobile also does it. You have to wait on that one. Okay, um, I'm going to raise the seat elevator up on this thing. I'm going to move some garbage around in here. And I'm going to have to do this in shifts because turning off the air conditioner is, well, it's already 78 degrees in here. Typically with repair videos, what I like to do is have one specific task that we're trying to tackle and then present that in a very concise and quick way, if you will. Because nobody wants to search around on YouTube and try to find a video that has three minutes of someone blathering on about whatever before they get to the part where they're actually fixing something. Unfortunately, that's exactly what this video is. We're doing a number of different things. I'm sort of putting it all together. So we're going to call this more of a theory of operation than an actual repair guide. Um, I will put some timestamps on the screen and then down below in the description as well. So if you want to skip to the specific parts, you can. Now, there are other videos out there already, and Permobile has released a few as well uh, quite a while back. But there's a few little things I would like to add that when you're not working on a brand new chair that you want to watch out for in ways that may become frustrating or things could possibly cause an issue if you're not made aware of them. So, um, this is sort of a long form, um, general concept of how these systems work and how you repair them as opposed to let's print something off and reference it while we're doing the repair. If that makes any sense. The other option would be to make this into like three or four different videos, but I don't think that's what I want to do. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. If you want specific like four minute videos uh, for each repair task, or if this style is a little bit more helpful, I guess. I suppose I could do both. Actually, you know what? I have been thinking about uh, taking clips out of videos and making a separate playlist. Okay, I'll say, answer my question. We're gonna have this long form one here, and then I'm going to take clips out of it and we will have those in a separate playlist uh, coming later. But yeah, we'll talk about that more. Now, just in case you're wondering, uh, people always say, why do you always do so many permobile videos? Why don't you do repairs on other chairs? Well, there's a couple of fairly pragmatic reasons for that. Uh, first off, all permobile chairs are pretty much the same. They all have this sort of standard 3G seating. They do have different sizes and different adjustments and things, but unlike other chairs that are out there, all these components are essentially interchangeable and the same. So I think doing videos on these is maybe more useful to more people. Now, don't get me wrong, I am going to do repair videos on other chairs. They are buried in storage right now, however, and I'm not going to easily have access to those until after I move. So, yeah, and the other thing is, I've got like 17 permobiles. So, at, at any given point, there, there's always going to be one of them that is needing repair or adjustment or whatnot. Now, the F3 here, it's fine. It doesn't need anything at the moment. But, I want to show you guys how to adjust these. There are other videos out there, um, but uh, we're going to kind of combine everything into one here. Okay, so if someone is asking if it is possible to connect a second joystick to the back of these chairs. Now this one actually has a uh, bracket right here that's designed for an attendant control. It's normally a smaller joystick that goes right here so someone can walk behind you and move the chair around and whatnot. Now I always assumed that you had to use the main joystick on the front of the chair to do anything and if you plugged a second one in it would get cranky. But as it turns out it was wrong. So if you happen to have another joystick laying around, this is an old monochrome joystick and this is a 2016 F3. Just so happens, I have an Arnet cable for accessories hanging out the back here. Now, right now I want to raise the seat elevator up a little bit more, but I don't feel like moving this tripod. Yes, I bought a tripod. I like, I've, I, in the last three years I haven't had one. 
now I'm finally using one. Um, but I don't want to move this and go up there and use the seating switches and everything. So we're just going to plug in this joystick and you can turn the chair on. It's going to go through a little like boot up diagnostic process. And then you can see that the other joystick over there has also powered on. Whichever chair you power on the joystick with is the one that will control it. So it's going to do this, then you turn it off, give it like five or ten seconds or something, then turn it back on, and boom, there we go. We now have control over this chair. Uh, more importantly, the seating functions. And I want to raise the seat elevator. Pretty cool, right? I just want to get this raised up here to where it's easier to work on and I'm not having to lean over. Okay, now we can turn it back off. And next time you power on the chair with the joystick in the front, it's going to do its little, like, new hardware discovery thing again. And um, then it'll be fine. Anytime you connect new hardware, our net systems do that. Okay, um, so what we're going to do, we're going to adjust, just ignore this wire, your chair's not going to have that. We're going to adjust the height of these armrests. And there's a few different factors involved in this. On these chairs, you have these two, these two struts here on the back, and these are what change the angle. If I can reach it. Those are what adjust the angle of your armrests by adjusting these. But when you change your seating height, you're going to have to adjust these as well, otherwise your armrests are going to go something like that. And it's going to be all weird. Now, it is possible to do this while someone's sitting in the chair. Um, it's best if they can make sure their elbows are not on the armrest while you're doing it. I was going to show and use the, the Allen wrench that is right here normally. But as you can see, it's missing on this chair. And I don't have another one here, so I'm just going to grab my tools. All right, so if we look at the back of the chair here, there are four screws here, here, here and here. There's these two, which we're gonna leave alone for right now, but to adjust the height of your armrests, you need to loosen, not remove, but just loosen these four hex screws. Now, most things on these chairs are metric, so this is a five millimeter T-handle, and we're just gonna break these loose a little bit here. Just give them like maybe one or two turns, just enough so they, uh, err so they're not gonna bind. And they may sound like breaking a little bit. Uh, don't back them out too far because then your T-nets inside this track are gonna slide down here into the nether regions and you're gonna have to screw around with that and we don't wanna do that. Okay, now these are loose. If you notice, the armrests are now all wobbly. See how this whole assembly now like moves around and stuff? This is why if someone is sitting in the chair when you're doing this, you wanna make sure their elbows are not on the armrests. There is sort of a built-in height gauge here on the back. You can see we are set to four right now, and then there's different numbers that go up and down. I'm not sure if those reference any sort of actual measurement that exists in the real world or just like a reference point. But what we're gonna do is there is one more Allen screw up here. You can see it down in this little hole here. Now, normally you would use your long Allen wrench if you want. That way you can sort of hold it up here and get out of the way of everything. But for this, I'm gonna have to remove the headrest because this is going to... Why is that so tight? Huh. Um, this is gonna interfere. Okay, that's a lot of work. This is gonna interfere a little bit. So anyways, what we do now is basically turn this screw and you turn it clockwise to raise them, counterclockwise to lower them. Uh, you can just see there's a, a giant piece of all thread rod. Where is it? Ah, there it is. That goes down here and into the back of the chair and connects to this mechanism and raises up and down. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise these up a little bit. I'm gonna make a note here, it's set at four because I wanna put this back when I'm done. I don't actually need to adjust this. I'm just kind of showing you guys how to do it. So. You're gonna turn this screw here. Oh, the other thing I mentioned first, you want to loosen up these little retainers here on each of these arms that adjust the angle of your armrests. You wanna make sure these are loose so that you can rotate these freely. So you can use a end wrench or adjustable wrench and there's two little flat spots on each side 
Now the thing to remember is two of these are going to be reverse thread. Uh, so if you're trying to loosen it and it's not loosening, turn it the other way. These should require almost no force. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. All right, now we can freely rotate these. Okay, we're gonna turn this screw now. And the thing to remember as you're raising and lowering this, you're kind of fighting the angle of your armrests. And also sometimes this whole assembly, since it's loose, can kind of get jammed a little bit. So if you wanna raise them up, what I recommend doing is lowering, you twist, uh, twist these little bars here to lower the angle of your armrest. You'll see this go down. So just, Turn these so that both armrests go down a little ways. And then as we turn this top screw, it's gonna sort of raise those, um, it's gonna raise the whole mechanism, but also the angle is gonna change a little bit. So the screw is a little bit stripped. So anyways, we're gonna turn this. And you should be able to see the armrests are going up and also their angle is changing. And like I was saying, you're gonna to wanna to sort of jiggle this occasionally because sometimes this will get bound up while you're adjusting it. Okay, there we go. And this, this little indicator number down here is not not exquisitely reliable. It's sort of attached to this cover, and on my chair this cover's broken. Um, there's supposed to be screws that go in here, but yeah, so like I was saying, if someone's sitting in the chair, just make sure their elbows are not on the armrests, and then when you make your adjustment, you can have them put their elbows out and then uh, see if it's in the right position. And then once you get your armrests high enough, uh, basically if the person's been sitting in the chair and you've determined that if they are the right height, what you want to do is sort of eyeball this whole mechanism from the back here. As you can see, it's all really loose and moves around. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that before you tighten up these four bolts, that this whole setup is pretty much level. It should be, but if you notice when I push down on this side, on this side, you can see the joystick over there moving. And since there is more weight on the joystick side, it is very probable that the armrests are gonna be leaning down over there. Let me pull this over and I'll show you. There you can see across both the armrests here. Check it out. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you tighten down the bolts, this side's not way down and this side's way up. Um, you wanna just kinda of figure out what the total range of movement is and then sort of put it in the middle. And if you're sighting across the back of this thing, you can actually see that fairly easily. Now again on this chair, this back cover is broken, so you can't really use that as a visual reference, but um, we just kind of figure out, that looks about right there. And then uh, you can tighten up these screws here. And you don't want to tighten them all at once as tight as they'll go. Uh, just go around in a couple, uh, take a couple laps basically and tighten them down as you go around a couple of times. Uh, again, just to make sure if things are binding or whatever, you're not gonna break stuff. Okay, there we go. Now you can see everything's good and solid again. They don't move around. Now that our height has been adjusted, however, um, no doubt the angle of these things is not gonna be correct. And that's where twisting these little giant, little giant, that's where twisting these turnbuckles on the back is going to adjust them. So as you can see, if I turn this, the armrest goes down. And if I turn it the other way, it goes up. So essentially, you want to have the person sitting in the chair, figure out the angle you want on this, and you can twist this. There is a small hole in the turnbuckle, as you can see right here. Um, in theory, you could put a screwdriver through there to assist turning this, but I don't recommend doing that. You shouldn't have your arms on here and you should be helping this up as you're making your adjustment because these will, this whole thing here will strip out very easily and you don't want that to happen because then you'll have to buy new parts and order stuff from Permobile and that's a pain. Not that ordering from Permobile is a pain, it's just you're gonna have to wait a while before you can get the thing running again. So don't want that.
So now you can go around and tighten up these little retaining clips here. Just basically run them up by hand. And then use your end wrench, I think it's half inch uh, end wrench, or what, 13 millimeter or something. I Don't quote me on that, I just use this wrench because, you know, it's easier and stuff. But you want to just grab this and lightly snug it up. You don't want to reef on this thing because it will strip out. And again, you don't want all these parts stripping out. And just remember, uh, some of them are reverse thread, which I think the bottom ones are reverse thread. Uh, so yeah, anyways, there we go, that's loose. And it doesn't hurt to check these every so often as you're using your chair anyways, because a lot of times these things will rattle loose and uh, then your armrest can kind of go all over the place, so. Camera's overheating, and so am I. Uh, we're up to 86 degrees. I'm gonna fire up the AC and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, it is really hard to film something in here that is black in color when everything else in here is white. Um, anyways, next thing we're gonna go over is how to remove these armrests altogether. Really, really easy. There's one screw right here. I guess I should say bolt. It's more of a bolt than a screw. And it should be, I believe, the same size as all the other ones. Aha, it is. So if your chair does have the Allen wrench that's supposed to be in here, uh, you can use it for pretty much all of these adjustments. Now, this side's ridiculously easy because there's no wires or anything. All you do is put your wrench in here, you turn it, take the screw out, don't lose the washer, the whole thing will be covered in grease, so just put that somewhere safe, like right there. And then all you do is lift up the armrest and gently pull. Ta-da! There we go, we have an armrest. Uh, there is a little like ball detent adjustment thing here. That shouldn't fall out. But uh, yeah, that's basically it, one screw. And then this assembly should stay on here. It is interesting to note, however, that this part is friction fit on here. So you don't want to bang around on this because this can definitely come off. Um, it's not too big a deal. It's sort of a spline thing that goes back on there. But just something to realize that will come off. And that's what holds your adjustment mechanism here for the angle of the whatnot. Um, so I'm going to stick this back on and then I'm going to show you the other side. The other side's a little bit more complicated because the joystick's over there. And if your chair is like factory and hasn't been screwed with, the wiring is gonna be tucked inside the elbow here of the armrest. This is gonna be a little bit difficult to film because it is dark colored. Um, so let's see if we can make this work. All right, um, so here's the back of our chair. And as you can see, this is our armrest and we've got some wires coming out of here. And those go up to the joystick and the swing away. So let me tilt this up here and you can kind of see it a little better. There we go. This little plastic cover is what needs to come off. And these, they don't almost always break, but they do a very high percentage of the time. And move the camera around here to the other side. You can see there's a little itty bitty hex screw there and another little itty bitty hex screw here. So with the armrest tipped up is gonna be the easiest way to get to that first one. There we go, 2.5 millimeter. So we're gonna take this out of here. And on a lot of my chairs that I'm always doing mods on, I will leave this cover removed because you can only take this thing on and off like maybe four or five times before um, it completely breaks. And uh, well, what happens is these little tabs, these little tabs right here come off and then you can't get the screws to hold it back on anymore. I'm gonna fold this armrest back down and I know you can't see it, but that other screw is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. I actually can't see it either. Um, it's at a really weird angle as well. So let's see if we can get this out of here. There we go. And there's our other screw. Now for the fun part with this flipped up, uh, you can usually get like a thumbnail or something here in this little gap, uh, same down here. And basically you're just gonna sort of push this thing up and out and hopefully the tabs won't break. There we, oh, got one side, and there's the other. And there you can see it's just a little plastic thing. 
and the tabs here are cracked. Down here it seems to be okay. But now you can see we have wiring inside here. Oh, I just remembered something. Very slight snafu here. Um, you can unplug the Arnett joystick cable, but you can't unplug the ICS switch box cable. Um, at least from right here. What you have to do is, down inside this back cover, you have to fold this open, and then this smaller wire here is what plugs in down there. So if you wanted to make this process repeatable, I would recommend just leaving these wires outside of this cover and putting the cover back on, and then your wires just sort of free float here. They don't usually get in the way. A lot of my permobiles, I have it that way. But the zip tie is gonna have to come off of here, and then these two screws are gonna have to come out, and, oh, actually, they're already out on this chair. There we go. And then, uh, you're gonna have to cut all the zip ties that go all the way down here. And this little flat connector down here is the cable that unplugs your ICS switch box. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's not like a sustainable option to constantly remove your armrests. Um, the reason I'm mentioning this is there was a few people that had asked me about it for transporting and whatnot. I think your best option might be to just take this apart so that these wires are loose and then pull the armrest off and set it in the seat. Uh, that way you don't have to dis worry about disconnecting all these wires because this isn't something you can do like weekly or even monthly. Um, all this stuff is gonna break. Actually, case in point, the reason there were no screws holding this cover on is because if you look closely, they are broken. There's uh, supposed to be flat spots here that screws can go through, and as you can see, those have snapped off. And I haven't even taken the back off this chair that many times, and it's broken. So, something to think about, if you do need to remove the armrest for whatever reason, um, well, let me put this back cover back on and we'll, we'll test it out. We're gonna pick up where we left off by this cover here being removed, and now your wiring is exposed so you have a little bit more slack. And then we're going to take this screw out. Careful not to strip it. Throw your tools on the floor. Don't forget to not lose your brass washer. And then you want to make sure the breaker is turned up on the chair because when you're moving all this, it's going to be real easy to accidentally bump your power switch and whatnot. So just sort of lift up on this and you can pull it out. And then. Yeah, I mean, it looks, you may have to kind of take some of these cables off here. Oh wait, there we go, we can pull that one out of the clip. Yeah, so that kind of works, it sits in the seat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't recommend doing this because, oh, well, I mean, if you have to, you can, but um, it's not gonna help the longevity of all these parts. Taking the stuff on and off constantly, it wasn't really designed for that and it's gonna wear things out. But if you have to, you can. Installing is just the reverse. There's a little pin that sticks up here and it needs to go into this little track. So when you're putting this armrest on, hold it about at a 45 degree angle. And then when you slide it on here, you can make sure that that's gonna be in the track. And then you can make sure it's all the way in, let it down, it should support itself. And then you can stick this screw back in and same uh, thing applies on this. Um, don't go crazy tight, just get it enough so it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, I think I found a camera angle that will work to show this. Uh, so right here is the little trough that the wires are supposed to go through. And this is the little cover that goes over it. Now, assuming you want to put this back together the way it's supposed to be, uh, these two wires here are going to be zip tied together, and the Arnett cables sort of have a triangular shape to them. So basically, you just sort of push the whole arrangement down inside here. There we go. Something like that and the smaller ICS wire should have room to sort of squeeze in here next to it. 
and uh, yeah, you can see the curve of the wire up here, how it was before and how it comes out down here. And then you're going to take your little cover with the little tabs on top here and it just basically goes over like this. Now I can't really film this because, I don't know, it just, it's hard to get these angles behind the seat here. But essentially these little tabs here on the top, you want to sort of hook them on first and then rotate the cover down. But it's sort of spring loaded at the same time. So I try to get this first tab on and make sure our back piece is on here. Then carefully with all of your friends fingers and toes, sort of, there we go, push the whole thing down on here. And now you can see this wire comes out here and as we move the armrest, it doesn't interfere with anything. We want to make sure there's enough slack there for movement on that. And then we can put our little 2.5 millimeter screws back in here. To be honest, using the Permobile service manual might be the best way to do this because this is one of those things that's almost impossible to film. All the angles here are really strange and it's kind of behind the seat. And at least with the illustrations in the service manual, um, you can sort of get a better idea of exactly what you're trying to do. Now this bottom screw, it's at a really weird angle. So even when you're looking at it, it's almost impossible to thread this in here. I like to get it started by hand and then I'll fold the armrest back down Oh, that wasn't all the van. And then fold the armrest back down and tighten it from the bottom side. Okay, I think, I think we're in there. And should be able to get to it from down here. There we go. You can see it's sticking out here. It's sort of a, a strange side angle. And this T-handle Allen tool is probably not the best thing to uh, use on this. I'm actually using the camera to my advantage here. I'm looking at the screen so I can kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. You should be able to get it mostly screwed in by hand and then you don't want to make these very tight because like I said, these things will just break. Which might not be the worst thing in the world because leaving these covers off is kind of a pretty common thing. Okay, there we go. It's in place. It ain't going nowhere. Okay, there's one last thing we were going to talk about, and that was changing the overall width of the armrest. But then I remembered the seating off this chair is kind of old and screwed up, and I won't say I used a hammer to put it together, but let's just say the mechanism that allows that stuff to slide back and forth is not um, ideal. It is these two screws right here. They are Allen, sort of like an all thread thing. You put your Allen wrench in the middle and then it's like, I think a 10 millimeter nut on the outside. So you'll need to, this isn't the right size, but you'll need to stick your Allen wrench in here and then also use your end wrench right here. Use this to hold it still, pull this jam nut off. And when that's loose, well, this is a giant tube here. And when both of these are loose, you can just grab this, take the weight off by lifting it up, and if you pull out, these will both get wider. Now, this is as narrow as this particular one can go right now, but if you do need to widen them out, or if they're really wide and you need to put them back in, is these two screws here. But I'm gonna have to direct you to the service manual on that. Um, I, I think I'm figuring out why there aren't a lot of videos about this, is it's, really difficult to make this stuff show up on camera without like a proper lighting stage and everything or completely disassembling everything. And I need to hop back into this chair when I'm done. So I don't want to get it too screwed up and taken apart. All right, for the last part of this repair, I went ahead and took the armrest back off the chair. And what we're working on is if you have this style of like vinyl armrest, sometimes it just comes off of here. Now, also a problem with these is this plastic ring will break constantly. Um, technically, I suppose you should probably take off this outer ring and take everything apart and whatnot, but there's a very easy way to fix this. Hot glue. Now, if you don't believe me, 
I would like you to check out the factory attachment method. Hot glue. So, oh, don't bend it that far, it'll crease. Um, so, yeah, we're just gonna put some hot glue in here and this will only get us new. This should be fairly straightforward. Um, as I just showed though, you wanna be careful about creasing this back because it's gonna make a mark in the vinyl. It's not gonna come out. So we'll just uh, tip this thing over. I don't think there's a reason to pull off the old hot glue that's already in here. So I'm just gonna smear some of it down here on the bottom and uh, I think we should be good. And when you're doing this too, you want to make sure you don't get the hot glue into these little clips right here. There's these little clips all over the place. You want to make sure you don't get the hot glue down in there because if you do have to take it apart the proper way later, that's going to make it nearly impossible. So we'll just cram this all back down in here. Use our flat blade to get the edges down in. There we go. And then we'll set the thing upside down so that the weight of itself will uh, hold it in there and we'll let it dry or cure or whatever it is that hot glue does. There you go. We've covered a few random things having to do with the Permobile 3G seating armrest, how to adjust a few things here and there. And like I was saying earlier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up this video and I'm going to make it into several smaller videos. and. It's not going to be at the exact moment this video is published, you have to give me a few days on that, but I'm going to put links down below to each of the shorter clips for each specific task. So you can drill down on that specific thing that you want to do and hopefully watch a much shorter video instead of this super long one that wanders all over the place. And the other thing too, uh, I'll mention in another video as well, but if there's any previous vlogs or anything that there's a little segment or a clip inside any other video that you would like to see made into a separate clip, let me know. Um, I've been making a list myself of various things. Like for example, the issue with the, when I accidentally drove the bounder down a half a flight of stairs, um, I'm gonna make that into a clip. So leave a comment below and let me know if there's any sections of any videos that uh, you wanna be able to say, oh hey, send it to a friend and check it out and not have them have to watch a you know 20 minute long thing to get to that one specific part if that makes any sense. Um, all these clips as they're published are gonna be put into a separate playlist and they're not going to notify your feed. I'm going to publish them silently and once that is all done, there'll be playlists that you can click on and it'll have all that stuff populated. I think you can subscribe to the playlist specifically. I don't know about notifications, but once I get those set up, I will mention it in another video and then we will keep adding stuff to that. Right now, I've got things sort of set up with like repair videos, wheelchair projects, uh, vlogs, live stream replays, like all the videos I think, uh, discussions. There's a bunch of random playlists that I try to keep updated, but yeah, if there's anything you'd like to see taken out of a previous video, made into a little bite-sized chunk and made separate, let me know. Uh, we're gonna call that good for now. Oh, um, part two of the new chair series, it'll be coming up here in the next couple of days. Uh, also, what else is there? There's always something. Just, just keep watching. <laughs>